It's Thoughts 23 here, and today we're going to be talking about Vol Steed knives. They just can't stop making bangers. All these right here are available. Uh, they've all been on the channel, and I have been loving them. I, <laughs> I've been recently playing around with the grind, um, just playing around with wood shaving. I, I enjoy doing that from time to time, and this thing is a wood shaving hog. This is one. This is the one with the true Scandi on it. They do have one with a micro bevel. These are in 154 cm steel. If you haven't seen my testing of this, go check it out. This was the sharpest Vosti that I've gotten out of box to date. Uh, we do have two two new Vosti, three new Vosti's to show y'all, and um, I'm gonna be testing the edge on two of them with my best tester. Somebody asked me to do that, so. You can get this one with the frag or smooth. I would probably say go with the smooth if they're still available, uh, just because uh, this pocket clip is sitting on the frag and the frag texture on this one is is got you know really crisp lines, so it, it does uh, shred the pocket after a while. It's not terrible in hand. Um, I, I've, I've been doing wood shaving without you know gloves on or anything, but awesome knife crossbar lock. And then the Bellamy, this is also available. If you like clip points, this thing's an absolute beaut. Uh, this one's in 154CM micarta with this cool texturing on it and beautiful action. You got flipper on this one. You got uh, top flipper. This thing has an amazing, amazing action on it. Uh, tip up left or right handed pocket clip like on the grind as well. And this one, this one uh, surprised me as well because this is a big knife. This is the Labrador. I think I called it the Doverman in my review. Beautifully contoured micarta scales. Massive uh, blade of 154cm steel. Deep carry pocket clip. And look at this action. Boop. Yeah. All my Vosti knives, uh, after you know either carrying them for a little while or taking them apart and cleaning them, have gotten just stupid smooth. Like this Nightshade TH. This is probably my, my favorite user of the bunch. Just because the blade shape, it works so well for just about any type of cutting. Love the action. And that downward slope on that blade lets you trap material kind of like a re just like a recurve would do. And it just gets deeper and deeper into the cut as you pull through. Awesome, awesome uh, knife right here. 154CM. And watch this action. This one's a guillotine if I let it. And the blade... Blade's nice and thin, and it has a little a little ting sound whenever I open it. I don't know if it's coming across, but love it. The first one we're going to look at is the Crossbar Lock Raccoon. These have just dropped, so if you want one of these, you might want to go check really quick uh, because I don't. They usually sell out rather quickly, especially the popular ones. And a lot of people have been waiting on this one, um, you know, because there were some issues with the the button lock raccoon uh, failing. This one. I, I've had a prototype of one of these uh, for at least over a month and done a lot of testing with it. And it's a super, super strong lockup on it and super smooth, as you can see. Nice and snappy, nice and comfortable. Same comfortable ergos as the button lock. Uh, same slicey blade. This one has a 14C28N blade on it. And I'll tell you what, their edges come, some of the sharpest out of box edges I've, I've ever gotten. Uh, we will test the. Let's see, we got two of them. Like I said, we'll test on my best tester and just get an idea. But these are available, want one. I will have links down in the description to all these knives. Uh, or actually, I'll probably just put uh, one link to their uh, folding knife page because there's not you know a bunch of designs. So you know whatever one you want, you can just pick up. It does help support the channel. I appreciate it. That's the only extra revenue I get off this channel. If you want to help support me, if not, that's that's totally cool as well. Now we got a big one. This is the new Vosteed Gator. This thing is massive. <laughs> it's got that frag pattern on here, but I don't know. If, let's see if I can bring back the grind. I don't know if you can see it through the thing, but the, the frag on this one has kind of, I don't know if it's either not as deep or it's kind of been uh, rounded over a little bit because it's not as... Uh, aggressive as the the grinds texture so that's nice they do have a chamfer going all the way around so you're not getting hard edges this one kind of has some hard edges where that ends right here but because this one's contoured um <laughs> i love the overall profile and like i said this thing's massive 
Just look at that. Just look at, look at it in my hand. Look how much, if I'm choked back, look how much I have. If I choke up, <laughs> I got so much. It is a beast. Let me give you a size reference to something that's kind of similar to this, and that is a Kaiser Towser K. It's a full-size knife as well, but look, pivot to pivot. Look, look at the difference. It dwarfs the Towser. Let's go butt to butt so you can get an idea on the length. Look at that. It makes this thing look puny. <laughs> Let's see, butt to butt here. And you can see how much more blade you got. A broader blade, longer blade. This thing comes in at uh, 9.33 inches overall length with almost, I mean, just under four inch blade. It's at 3.96 inches from here to here. So very, very close to a four inch blade. And I'm glad to see them, you know, making some a bigger knife. Right off the back, I noticed I was, I always, you know, feel the grind just to see, get an idea of about, you know, how thin the grind is before I put the calipers on it. And I was like, man, there's, you don't really feel a, a big lip right here. at The uh, secondary bevel, if it's thick, you'll feel it drop off. So I put my calipers on here and mine's reading around 14 thousandths. That is nice and thin, especially for such a big blade. This one is in 14C 28 inch steel. And I had to go do some cutting with it. Um, I <laughs> took it outside, took it to the garage to start doing a little bit of the testing. And I cut up a ton of cardboard. In this edge, where all where I was cutting from like here to here is still nice and sharp. Um, I'll try to show as much as that as I can, just so I can see how much I cut. Uh, more than I do during the test, but, you know, uh, I was just having fun cutting up the cardboard. Um, excellent blade shape. You don't have, you know, you have a very gradual belly. You have a low tip, so great for utility cuts. Uh, doing tip leading cuts as well. You have a long row of uh, useful jimping right there. Now, I did find when I was doing uh, the, the cardboard, choke back right here is probably the most comfortable for me because I have a medium-sized hand. This is a little bit wider. I can choke up right here, but long periods of cutting like that, it, it wasn't super comfortable. Uh, not to where it was a hot spot or anything. It just felt better, of course, right here for me uh, just because of the size of my hands. If you have bigger hands, you'll better wrap around that a little bit easier. You do have a, a, a decent sharpening tool, and you can see the plunge comes right here where my, my thumbnail is. And you should be able to get a good bit of sharpenings out of that because of how thin it is behind the edge. So uh, that's awesome. I'll try to remember to pop up a picture of this knife taken apart because I wanted to see what... Uh, I wanted to see why, how this thing was so smooth. I mean, just like I had to tighten it down because it was almost, it was too smooth. It was a guillotine. <laughs> so, um, you know, I knew that it has a pretty, you know, substantial blade. So that's part of it. But when I took it apart, I noticed that it's riding on multi-row bearings. So that's, you know, the big reason why it's so smooth. It's got more um, surface area. So more stability for the for that blade to pivot on the uh, pivot on the pivot. Uh, blade hole, excellent for reverse flicking, thumb flicking, slow roll, and then you got a front flipper right here. These type I'm never that great at, but the jimping is perfect. It comes out pretty nice. And then as you can see, you also have a back flipper right there. Nice. That one works very very well comes rocketing out. Um, it is tipped for left-handed carry as well, and they, they put a little uh, plate there, uh, something that I was kind of wanting to see on the grind. Glad they did it there. They, they are really good at taking suggestions. You know, if if uh, everybody says, I don't like that or I want something, but they're good at listening to what we're looking for. Now, one thing, one nitpick that I have about the knife, um, such a big knife, you have a T8 pivot and T6 body screws and clip screws. That's They should be T8 throughout. Um, now, when I took it apart, I had no issues. But, you know, it, it's just, I don't know. Even if it wasn't a bigger knife, I think they should be using T8 throughout. That's something I'm going to ask them. Now, let's check the sharpness out on the best tester. So, several people asked me to test the edge on one of these best testers. 
Um, and being that I have it, I figure I could do it. Glad Jared made that video because it definitely matters if you try to do this quickly. 160, wow. Test number two. Wow, 145, and test number three. You want to let the blade do the cutting very slow once it touches it. One thirty-five. All right, now if that's something, if this is something I want to see more often, y'all definitely got to let me know down in the uh, comments because I could try to do it. I don't think I'll do it three times every single time because I'm just trying to get a ballpark. And I like Jared's video he made the other day, knees and eyes, because it's so true. If you hurry and and push that down, uh, you know, a little quicker than you would do normally, it's going to give you a low reading every single time almost. It's so easy to cheat it. You definitely have to slowly lower it. And as soon as it starts to touch that, that filament, I'm, I'm just letting the weight of this blade go down until it cuts it itself, not forcing it through um, or popping it. I, I did the average of the three tests and it came out to 146.6. That is outstanding, especially for a production knife. Um, but that didn't surprise me because their edges always come at least hair shaving sharp. I have not got a bad edge yet. <laughs> the last one we got for you today is a prototype, and that is the Mini Raccoon. Now, the Mini Raccoon has a flipper tab uh, as well as the blade hole, and this one is in mustard yellow G10. I don't love the G10, but um, I do like the knife so far. It's smooth G10, G10 backspacer, deep carry tip up pocket clip. This one's a coated blade, so you have a coated clip on it, encoded hardware, coated filler tab. It is reversible. Uh, flipper fires out nice. Pretty darn smooth. Reverse flicks nice. Thumb flicks nice. Uh, one thing I wish I, I, I would like to see on the on, on the regular production version of this is either come back a little bit more onto the flipper tab just to give you a little bit more space so you could use that as a forward finger trawl. That's on the smaller knives. I like to be able to do that, you know, so if you got a large hand, you can still get a four finger grip on it. Um, I would rather them come this direction than that direction. So I'm not losing more edge. Uh, you definitely have a good bit of sharpening room because you can see that plunge comes down way down here. So very nicely done. I don't know the steel on it because this is, like I said, prototype, but I'm guessing it's probably 14C, which I'm totally happy with. Um, if they're gonna put jimping, I would I would add a little bit more jimping, you know, a little bit longer, being it's a smaller knife. Uh, good access to the lock bar on this one. And uh, the flipping action's nice, even with that minimal flipper tab. You got some jumps there that grip out the finger nicely. It's comfortable for me and it's nice and lightweight. Let me show you what it looks like uh, next to the original Raccoon button lock. So here it is. Let's go pivot to pivot first. Let me zoom on in a little bit for y'all. So there you go, that's the pivot to pivot. Now let's go butt to butt. So there's, you can see the extra length. So definitely would love to hear y'all thoughts on the mini raccoon. Now I tested, I, I tested the edge on this one as well. I'm gonna test the mini raccoon as well. We're just gonna do it once. I just wanna get a general idea. I'm running out of filament. Two hundred thirty. Yeah, decided to do one more. One sixty five. Got to know my average.
160. All right. After averaging the three, uh, we got 185, and that is definitely a respectable edge as well. Uh, very, very nice. Like I said, if y'all want to see me <laughs> test the edges on the knives out of box more often, y'all have to let me know. Um, I'll try to do it. That's just another expense too, because I'm, I'm out to buy some more filament and stuff. So I don't mind doing it. But like I said, if I do it, <laughs> I'm probably only going to do one, maybe two, and average those two because uh, the cost is going to, you know, start to get to me along with everything else I already uh, pay for. So <laughs> if you have any questions about any of the models, feel free to ask me down in the comments. Um, if you want one of these or especially one of, uh, where's it at? If you want one of these, I would probably jump on it because if I had to guess, this one will probably sell out the quickest. These are still available and they've been, been on there for a little while because it's a bigger knife. This one is ju just dropped and some, I know a lot of people told me they could wait for this one to come out and it's now available. So go jump on them if you want one. <clears throat> I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one.